Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sharing 14 words with you that you really need to know if you're going through the probate process. Now, I know 14 words sounds like a lot, but believe me, I'm going to quickly just hit on each one. But at the same time, I'm going to make sure that you have a clear understanding of what each one is. So if you're speaking with an attorney or talking with someone at the clerk of court office and they're using these words, you'll know exactly what they mean. Now, before we dive in, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, and give the thumbs up a like. In doing so, you'll help my channel to grow. So the first word is estate. And estate is anything of value that an individual owns. So it can be a house, it can be a car, a boat, a motorcycle. It can be furniture or jewelry, antiques money in a bank account, anything that has value to it. But when it comes to probate, it's talking about those things that the individual owned solely in his name alone. So if it belonged in his name and his wife's name, this possibly may not have to be included in probate, but if it was just strictly in his name, then there is a really good chance that it will have to be included in probate. So when it comes to probate, probate is the legal process of managing and distributing a person's assets. So if this person had creditors, some of his assets may need to be sold in order to pay the creditors off. If this person had beneficiaries, some of the things may need to be sold to give the money to the beneficiaries or those certain belongings could just be passed down to the beneficiary. If there was heirs, some of the, his assets may need to be sold so that the heirs can also receive their portion. So it's just the legal process of taking what he owned and rightfully dividing it among the creditors, the beneficiaries, and the heirs. Now, two other words that you may hear an attorney use is testate and intestate. Testate simply means that the person who died had a will. He had created a will before he died. Intestate means that he died without a will. So if an attorney asks you, well, did he die intestate? He's just saying, did he die without a will? Did he die testate? Did he have a will created before he died? Now, if he created a will before he died, most likely he appointed someone to be the executor. Now, there's the executor who will carry out his wishes and manage his estate. It will be the executor who will make sure that the creditors are paid off, that will make sure the beneficiaries receive whatever he left them. And if the heirs are to receive something, to make sure that they get what they're um, supposed to receive also. If he did not create a will and he died intestate, then what happens is that the court will appoint someone to be an administrator. So if he died with a will, it is an executor who will manage his estate. If he died without a will, it is an administrator who will manage his estate. And the roles and the responsibilities for both are the same. They, they're both responsible for managing the account. They're both responsible for letting the creditors know and paying off the creditors and, and seeing that the beneficiaries get what the person left them and seeing that the heirs get what's theirs if something is left for them. Now the executor and the administrator, their roles are the same. They both do the same thing. It's just that one was appointed by the will and it's the other was appointed by the court. Now, another name that you will hear the executor and the administrator called is the personal representative. And then sometimes they'll just abbreviate it and say the PR. So all three, the administrator, the executor, the PR, their roles are exactly the same. Now, once the court approves the executor to be the executor, they will give them something called letters testamentary. It's this letter that gives them the authority to act on the behalf of their loved one. So this letter gives them the authority to have money move from one bank account into an estate bank account. It gives them the authority to call up the mortgage company and to get information about what's going on with the mortgage. It gives them the authority to notify the creditors and to pay the creditors off. It gives them the authority to manage everything that's pertaining to that account. 
Now, it's exactly the same thing with the administrator. It's just that the papers that they receive will be called letters of administration. But the responsibility and the authority is the same with both letters. So you've heard me say the loved one, the person who died, the person who's deceased. But another name for this is the decedent. So when you go get the papers to file probate, you're going to see on the form it asking, what was the decedent's name? What county did the decedent die in? Where did the decedent live? This simply just means the person who died. Now, you may already know this, but I just want to still hit on these two words just in case someone doesn't know. Beneficiary. The beneficiary is the person that the decedent named in the will to receive something. So if he named somebody in the will, that is the beneficiary. Now, the people he did not name in the will that was in his bloodline, his family, these are the heirs. Now, the beneficiaries will receive their things before the heirs will. So normally how it goes is the creditors are going to be paid off first. If there's any taxes, um, attorney fees, things like that. The next is going to be the beneficiaries. And then if anything is left, the heirs. Now in the will, if he left real estate to someone, that person is a beneficiary because he left it to him, but they're also known as the devisee. So, and the last word I want to go over is a sheet. So a sheet simply means that if there are no heirs at all, then the government can step in and take possession of the estate. It's normally the state and each state may do things differently. But in this case, let's just say it would be the state of North Carolina that would take possession of this person's estate. Now, I'm also a registered nurse. And I was thinking about a time when I had spoke with a man. I think he was like somewhere in his 90s. He was in a nursing home and we had to go see him. And he was telling us about how he was ready to die. He said that he had outlived everyone. He said all of his friends was gone. He had outlived his wife. He had outlived his daughter, I believe he said. He said that there was no one else here. He felt alone and he was just ready to leave. Now, if what he said was correct and there truly were no heirs, in this case, then the state would take possession of this man's estate and do whatever I guess they do with it, sell it, keep it. I don't know what they do with it, but the state would take possession of it if there are no heirs at all. So that's it. Those are the 14 words that I wanted you to know. I'm pretty sure if you're going through probate, at some point you are going to hear these words, especially the letters testamentary and letters of administration. Remember that these papers are very, very important because it's the papers that give you the authority to speak on the decedent's behalf, to manage his estate. And if you lose these papers, if you don't have possession of these papers, then the bank, then the mortgage company or anybody else, they're not authorized to give you any information. So I hope this helps. If you have any comments or any other words that you would like to know the meaning of or you would like to know the breakdown of, just leave it in the comment section. I thank you. For I thank you for taking out time for this video. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next video.